Now let's give God all the glory and all the honor. Come on, give it to him, all the glory and all the honor. You've probably already did it. You've had a wonderful time thus far. The spirit of the Lord is rich in this house, but God is love. And the way people know God exists is how much love you show them. So hug two or three people for longer than two seconds and show them who God is by loving on a neighbor, loving on a friend, loving on a stranger in Jesus' name. You that are watching by a virtual sanctuary, welcome to the Shabbat Church, better known as the place of passion. If ever you are in Central Florida or anywhere close, we have two services designed with you in mind. One is on Wednesday at 7.30. We're here on Wednesdays to experience it on Sunday, which is Sunday morning at 10.30. If ever you're here, we have a seat reserved with you in mind and a hug that's designed just for you. I am Dr. Hall, Todd, Todd Hall, and I am the senior and lead pastor of this wonderful church. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. Good morning to all of you. You may be seated. I say good morning to all of you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into that name. They are safe. It is also because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his love and kindness is better than life. You that are clapping, that shows appreciation. But great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, our Father, every time we wake up in the morning, new mercies we see, and all that we've needed, his hands have provided. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Let's thank God for how great he is one more time. Get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. Oh, get right, church. That's what we come here to learn. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church. I know y'all ain't Baptist. The evening train might be too late. Evening train might be too late. Evening train might be too late. Get right, church. All right, come on, clap through here. My visit is singing. I'm gonna take you straight to the hook. Come on. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. Come on, to us. Oh.
It's first Sunday, y'all. Come on. It's first Sunday. three people if you're sanctified and tell them he's a mighty God I said touch him and tell him he's a mighty God if you've experienced how good he is politely touch somebody and inform them he's a mighty God The devil's man, but we'll go sweeping through the city where my captain has gone before. We gonna sit down. We gonna sit out on the bank of the river. Tell your neighbor. See a visitor praising him. 
this morning. But I can't join praise your mother song. Feet on the floor, hands in the air. Feet on the floor, your hands in the air. Feet on the floor, hands in the air. Feet on the floor, hands. Now you do one or the other. Now you do one or the other. Everyone can be seated except a small group. If you fully believe that when August concluded, that your season for the rest of the year is about to be better than all the months of the year, you better claim some praise space and sign your name right where you are. You got one minute.
should have paid with one thing in mind. I will bless the Lord at all. All of you that claim to be future millionaires, dance. All of you that want your children to live a day. This is our posture. This is our DNA. See if it's authentic. We've come this far by faith. You may be seated, leaning on the Lord. You can praise Him, trusting in His holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, can turn around. We've come this far by faith.
Vanessa Bell said, I have faith that can conquer anything. Faith that can conquer anything. I know, and this is the first time I've seen guests that are so worshipful that they act like this is their church. I'm worship friendly. Will you tell somebody I'm worship friendly? That simply means I'm not going to let you praise him by yourself. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I want to try to simmer you down so I can teach the word of the Lord but if in the middle of my sermon I start dancing I'll be back because I believe August was actually the final days of some of your most horrendous despicable dysfunctional months of our entire lives I believe it go ahead and praise him sir God is not a man that he should lie nor is he the son of a man that he should repent if he said it he'll do it and if he spoke it it shall come to pass. Again, articulate to your neighbor, I am worship friendly. On this Wednesday, I know the announcements have gone out effectively through our announcer, Dr. Tracy. We will not be in this building at all. Wednesday, for those watching online, we are for the first time in history playing hooky from our church. We're not playing hooky from church in. We're going out of our way down to Jacksonville, Florida to worship in the oldest black historical church in the state of Florida. Bethel, I don't hear nobody, where the pastor's the Honorable Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr. You should be clapping while I'm talking. He's going through a sabbatical and I and a few of his best friends are going to be taking over his Wednesday service. I chose to do the first one to get it out the way. Next month on a Wednesday is Dr. Jude. Jamal Bryan at another time is Dr. William Murphy, Bishop William Murphy at another time is Bishop Marvin Sapp at another time. These are his boys. I'm just his friend. But I'm saying that we are going down there to preach and I'll still be preaching on miracles when I get there. So you will still be in your flow. Touch somebody and tell them I'll still be in my flow. On this Friday, your bishop will be preaching. I don't think I sent him to fly, but I'll be preaching at New Jerusalem Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. The lineup this morning was His Grace Bishop George Bloomer. Tonight, Prophet Brian Kahn. Uh, Monday, Bishop Lambert Gates. Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm trying to remember all these speakers. Uh, bishop Tim Newton and then Bishop... Paul Sylvester Morton, and then your bishop will be closing on that Friday 
at the New Jerusalem Church where the chief prelate and apostle is Dr. Kevin A. Williams and uh, the Honorable Bishop, Vice Bishop, Bishop Earl Wortham of Baltimore, Maryland, which I've known them all over 30 years. Then y'all got a guest speak on Sunday. Dr. Todd Hall will be back with y'all. I psyched y'all out, huh? but I'll be back on next Sunday preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. On the 28th of August, he had been attacked and didn't know anything was wrong with him, but it wasn't too major. They caught it before anything. You know when your gift is in your hands, but your hand is in trouble of being cut off or severed, and God catches it before that can happen, that's a miracle. And our own bass player, Berlin, was attacked, had surgery. He is back with us safe and sound in the house. I don't hear nobody. Of the Lord, able to still finish what God has called him to do. He had a birthday on August the 28th, and we want to celebrate my guy. You don't know what it is when you're about to have what you do for a living severed. That's like me preaching and I've been there one time hearing that you may have throat cancer. I thank God for his miraculous power. If you're happy you're still able to do what he's called you to do, you ought to clap your hands right there. To the entire tier group of leadership, let's salute them, every last one of them. Shabak, we have visitors. Now I want to make this comfortable for the women, because we done dance, cut the air on. Cut the air on ASAP. Just watch the fans and you'll know the plan. Thank you. You don't have to do it, Dr. Kevin. We got you, Elder. These young guys doing their job. Oh, he's doing the major job. Go right ahead. He got keys to everything. We have a lot of guests. I want to name them and I want your claps to be healthy. This is a guest of Elder Ferguson. Now, let me already tell y'all, we have 37 visitors this morning. Shabbat, we have 37 visitors. That's more than most churches' Bible study. If some of you started a ministry, it would be more than your membership for at least three years. You think it's easy? Try it and see if I know what I'm talking about. We have 37 visitors, and I don't know certain people, but when I know I've never seen you, I know you're a visitor. I'm really excited about the male visitors that we have today. Oh, sisters, y'all ain't gonna clap for that. That they didn't run out of here when y'all started tripping. and Because I saw some of the male species going, is this real? It's as real as you going to the club. You don't look at them women when they're shaking, when they're in the club. You don't run. You be like, yep, I'm staying right here. The same people you see in church, you probably saw them at the club. They're the same people. Same people that ate at McDonald's, that honked you and said, hurry. They're the same people in here. But Elder Ferguson brought a guest with him, brought two guests, Craig and Jessica Simaday. Where are you? Please stand. Can we love on Craig and Jessica a little louder than that? Thank you all for coming. When I say healthy, I mean healthy. And the next time I look over in the praise group section and you don't clap and scream, you will not be on the praise team next week. Now, I'm dead serious. And I'm talking from the leaders down. You must learn that no one can enjoy your ministry 
and you not thank God for the people that stand and push what you do. It's called reciprocation. It's called common sense. Treat everybody like they were your mama. Priscilla Butts, she brought someone that hails from Winter Haven, Florida. I know y'all saying, who's Priscilla Butts? That's posh, y'all. Stand up, posh, so we can thank God for our member. Y'all clap for her. She looked real Church of God in Christ this morning. I don't care what y'all say. She looked good this morning. It looked sanctified. And Sis Bia Williams, Sis Bia, Sabia Williams is her, is her guest. Can we clap for Sabia? That's much better. From Nassau, Bahama. No one's visitor, the Holy Spirit led her here. Is Park a oh Lord, Lord? Is Parker Sia Wilson? Can we clap for our sister from NASA? I'll be there, I think, in the month of October for one day, and then we'll be there January the 13th for Devard Francis. We'll be over in Nassau having a good time. Amen. Uh, Corey McGree has a guest today. Can y'all clap for our minister of music and director of music, Corey? That's a weak clap for Corey. This guest is special and make her feel special. It's his mother, Michelle McCree. Where are you? Where's Michelle? Back there, come on, y'all. Oh, yeah, that's his mama. Yeah, ain't no doubt in my mind. Lord, you look like your mother or your father. Oh, okay, because if you look more like your daddy, your mom and daddy, brothers and sisters. Thank you for lending your son to us. We appreciate what you birthed. Can y'all please clap again for Sister Michelle. Kissimmee, Florida, no one invited them. They're just here. Misha and Jermaine King, where are you? Please stand. They're in the back. Let's thank God for Misha. Come on, louder, and Jermaine King. People tell me, Bishop, if you just let somebody else do this, like Elder Javon, then you can just preach. When you are in a building space, if you eat at a restaurant, you feel more important when the owner of the restaurant, see, some of you just know nothing about customer service. You just don't know anything. That's why you have minimal friends, not because you don't want more. You barely can keep the two that you have. You two brought us a guest from Davenport, Florida. David Montague, where are you, David Montague? David Montague in the back with the pink shirt on. Can we celebrate him? Our associate pastor, Pastor Joe, has a guest here. They are from Greater Emmanuel Temple of Deliverance. I know their bishop for over 20 years. The man can dance like he on water. That's where Joe get his dance from too and everybody that steals going from side to side. They get it from one man. Bishop Eric F. Mitchell of Detroit, Michigan. He has four of his members here. Tyler Linson Stan, Rochelle Johnson Stan, Tequesia Linson Stan, Sir James Griffin. Can we clap for all of them that are here from Detroit? These people are from Safe Haven Christian Center. Pritchard, oh yeah, okay, Safe Haven. Their vice bishop, our, our, my vice bishop invited them here while they were here, which is Bishop Pleasant. Clap for Bishop Brian Pleasant. I said clap for him. 
Both of these people are blessed. They are deacons and elders in the Lord's church. Deacon Gerald Trotter and Elder Sylvia Trotter. Where are you? The Trotter family. Can we clap for the Trotter family? Oh, I like her. She does that love thing. Uh -oh. Our pastor does that too. So that's good. She needs to know she does not own that. That that is a worldwide untrademarkable thing. But we thank God for them coming all the way from Safe Haven, which is a minor, which is a major church in Pritchard. Pritchard is outside of Mobile, outside of Chickasaw. You think I don't know where Pritchard, Alabama is, right? But I want y'all to know I preached all through there, for real. See, oh, y'all remember, huh? Chickasaw at Word of Life uh, Church, Bishop Henry Roberts and a few other people there that I used to minister for. Mobile, Alabama's in the house. Clap for Mobile. They are guests of Tabitha Humphrey. Her name is Mary Grayson. Mary, where are you, Sister Mary? Let's clap. Y'all only got a few more left. This, these two people from Orlando, Florida, they are guests of our member Howard Gum. Stand and let's thank God for our own. Now, I'm going to call these names, but if a person stands who's one of these names, they my guest. They Howie's longest friend, but I invited them last night and then he hitched a ride. That's how this went. I invited him. And then how we say, you want to go pick me up? But he did know him way before I did. A lot of people that are joining here, I met through his introduction. And I appreciate a man that shares his circle and his corner with his father. Can y'all clap? Because I appreciate him. Zach Brown, stand, Zach. That's my guy. I need y'all to clap for my guest, Howard's guest. And Kiara Reed, where are you? And if I am correct, if it's still on, y'all are engaged to be married soon. Let's rejoice for these young people. Pretty hair, nice beard, light skin, got a job, but he's taken. Let's move forward. YouTube from Hudson, Florida. Never heard of that. Now I've heard a lot of places. Where's Hudson? Where's Hudson, Florida? Hold on. Where, where's that? You drove two hours north or south? She don't even know. Two hours you drove. Why did you drive two hours? Now, we can't script this. We can't script this, Howie. Howie, we can't script this. I didn't put words in her mouth. God put us in her heart. Her name is Lolita Johnson. Let's not forget her. Can we thank God for her? Last but not least, TikTok. had clips of your bishop. Whoever put them up, thank you. They have clips of every ministry in here, especially DAP70 and the praise team. Y'all are on TikTok. Your bishop is on there as the dancing bishop. Got to lose a few more pounds. I'll go back. But right now, heavy is the load that I'm carrying. It ain't because of me. Doctor wouldn't let me go, but I'm on my way back again. But this group of people, I can't say all their names, so I took the elders and the person who brought them. They came from Augusta, Georgia, by the van load. I don't hear nobody. By the van. 
Y'all not cut by the van load. They pulled up and it looked like an entire church walked out of this van. And even though they're all part of either the Rhodes family, Newman family, or the Johnson family, it's Newman's, Johnson's, and Rhodes. That's the way I see it. They came here and they act like they were members. They walked up here, fell out, ushered. Felicia Rhodes, where are you? Stand. She is the one that brought all of the guests. Stand. Every guest from Augusta, Georgia. Can we thank God for Augusta, Georgia? I feel like I cover that family. I don't know why, but y'all be seated. I feel like I cover that family. I don't know why, but I feel that in Jesus' name. Let's clap for all the guests one more time. Now that I'm about to preach, once you come in the sanctuary, do not go back out. I don't have her name. What's her name? Hold on. We got two guests who want to be acknowledged whose name is not on my sheet. Every guest whose name was not mentioned, stand up. Let me ask y'all a question. Did any of you go by that desk and fill out your name? That's why you have not been called, just in case. I'm not prophetically calling names. <laughs> At least not right now. I'm reading the paper, but we want to say to all of you that came from wherever you're from, and I know it's been far, and whoever invited you, I bless God for them. I, Dr. Todd Hall, appreciate your being here and our church loves that you chose us to fellowship with. Let's clap for them in Jesus' name. I do cover e-members. If you don't have a church at your home, you need to join here. If you don't have a bishop, you need to be properly covered. I'm not easy to get along with, but I can take you a long way in life. Get your Bibles. It took me 22 minutes to acknowledge guests. I could have rushed and did speed reading. All of you stand after I have called your name. And if it keeps getting, yes. Hold on. Hold on, stop. You ain't going to wreck my church. No, no. That's what you ain't going to do. Not when I say I'm getting ready to preach. You wrecked my church on Wednesday night. We was closing prayer. Walking out the door. And this African-American gray-haired gentleman started a fire now I'm going to give you my shanda I'm going to give you two minutes to stand and say it at the end I'm going to praise on and let something happen let's listen go ahead favorite night and um, I told the church that my wife had died so just before the service turned out I told Bishop I need you to touch and agree with me that God raised from the dead we got one more day to raise from the dead so on Thursday I didn't hear anything but Friday Pastor Michael LeMay of Sins International called me he said brother Henry he said I seen in the spirit that your wife was in heaven a white robe and had that smile on her face 
and you telling God to raise her from the dead, and she telling only when you see him back, she telling God, I don't want to come back. Ain't that a blessing? Yes. She don't want to come back. And guess what? I want to say that that's what she want to be. God is good. Do y'all know how much faith it takes to hear a man who was tripping, who loved his wife, get prayed for here, called by another man who said, your wife could come back, but she told God, I want to stay. Now, let me tell you, if I make it to heaven once, I ain't coming back to see y'all because you're going to miss me, but I'll catch up with you later. We need to praise God for faith that would speak that strong. I'm not lying to any of you. Some of you will miss your family and come back. But if I see Jesus and he say, well done, I ain't coming back. I'd rather be with my creator than my parents. And I'd rather be there talking to him about my children. Help that hard-headed demonic child. Ain't no guarantee you're going to make it twice. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. I'm glad he didn't say she came back to life. I done bumped my head right on that car. I looked at my musicians. I said, goodbye. If that man say anything like that, I'm going all the way home without preaching. Y'all going to be, where's Prophet Hall? The man went to bed. <laughs> Laugh all you want. Some of you would have been calm because you don't know him. I don't take him for granted. Get your Bibles. Thank you, Jesus. Good God Almighty. I got up this morning Elder White did you get your ordination papers stand up let's clap for him in person Elder Troy White your wife did a wonderful job in representing you and we appreciate her as well. I got up this morning, Elder Curry, and I was studying my message all day yesterday, meditating on it all week. I meditate, then I saturate. I want Elder Vickers to know that you owe me lunch or dinner because I came by a certain place and uh, you were not there and didn't get there till after 8.30. I want you to know that I came by on Friday so you understand that. Okay came to celebrate your wife and uh, praise the Lord. Look at him, he over there like, Bishop really came shucks. Yeah, left my boys and said, I'll be back. Amen, it's, oh, don't blame the wife, it's her birthday. I wasn't invited by the wife, I was invited by you. You should have texted me and said, I'm gonna be late, Bishop. Praise the Lord, on time is late and late is a demon. All right, so I woke up. That's the church's belief. I woke up. I woke up this morning to write what I had meditated on. Can I get three people to talk to me? Don't turn here. And I, and I read out of the book of Matthew and out of the book of John and I studied it for over. If you saturate the time spent Listening, learning, and writing, it's nine hours. That's most of the time I spend on a message for you every time I stand behind this sacred desk. It commences at nine hours. I give you the watered down version, I give the world the deeper version because you'll have me for a long time. So I read out of the book of Matthew and John and wrote an entire sermon. And this morning when I got up, Deacon Cleveland, to put the icing on the cake, the Lord says, I'm not saying any of that now. I changed my mind. 
I said, what? I'm not lying now. Come here. Don't tell me. You see those scriptures? Absolutely. Are you really looking or you just agreeing? No, no. Oh, okay. Because no. your two guests over there, right? Yes, Greek, Hebrew. Absolutely. Then you see a line drawn because it was canceled. So now you see new scriptures, yes, new topics, Absolutely. new sermon. Yes, All right, good. Be seated. This was some work. That's why I am very serious today about none of my leaders or members walking back and forth while I preach. Because if you don't catch the first sermon on miracles, the rest won't matter. Every guest that came, you came on the right Sunday. Because when you leave here, a miracle is going to be attracted to your life. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a miracle magnet. That could be a hashtag for all Shabakians. Let's push your church this week all month and use hashtags that deal with the message. This one is called I'm a miracle magnet. Because some of you have attracted enough trash. Am I right? Some of you have attracted enough bad relationships. Am I right? Come on, grow up and talk to me. Some of you have attracted broke long enough. Am I right? Time to attract some positive things to your life even while you're experiencing a negative situation. Not to be redundant or repetitive. Look at one more person. Make that your communicating partner and tell them I'm a miracle magnet. What's crazy is I couldn't believe that I had to study magnets. I'll give you one thing, save it for Bible study. One person jump and be blessed. Two magnets can attach. You don't know. If you take two magnets and try to put them together, they separate. Because it's created not to attract the same material. If you have a magnet and you have a silver nail made out of the right material, the nail will attach itself to the magnet. Y'all are not talking. The magnet does not attach itself to the nail. See, five of you are intelligent. If you put out a nail, nothing will attract to the nail. But if you put something with a little more power. It will summons and attract what's necessary to it. Some of you may not catch this. I'll say it again because you're making me feel like I wasted nine hours. But let me say this for three of you. You're attracting miracles because you are the magnet and the miracle is the merchandise, right? What you attract will tell other people who you are. Let me say it again. What and who you attract will tell people what you're made of. So you women, don't get mad, let me teach that keep getting bad man after bad man after bad man. That's what you attracted. So you need to tell God if you need a miracle, make you out of different material so you can start drawing better quality. Am I right about it? Look at somebody and tell me, ain't nothing wrong with the miracle. It's me. Miracles are out here. Now, whether you receive one is a different story. The clock sister said, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I see the invisible. I feel the intangible. The sky is the limit to what I can have. 
Just believe and receive it. God will perform it. When? Hey, hey. Then the hook of that song, if that's properly known, says, I expect a miracle every day. God will make a way. That's what a miracle is. God making a way. Now, you that are clapping, you're probably drawing that miracle to you now, right? I expect a miracle every day. God will make a way. Out of no way, but the prerequisite is just believe. And receive it, Mike. God will perform it today. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. I still feel a dance in my feet. I ain't lying. Look at somebody and tell them this will be a September to remember. Would you tell somebody? This will be a September. Y'all going to draw miracles on a weekly basis about time I'm finished. This shall be a September to remember. Now don't, now don't judge my praise and want my product, okay? Because my praise is making me attractive. Magnets must attract. If you're a praiser, you're possibly a magnet. If you're a worshiper, you are possibly a magnet. Luke 13, verse 10 through 17, this book is recorded by a physician. So I'm going to take his opinion because he has finished med school. And if any healing is a miracle, the doctor can say that. Because the doctor, the physician, the specialist, the surgeon calls a miracle that which is out of their hands that they have deemed to end in death. If the person does not die after I've done all that I can do and they live, we attribute that healing not to medicinal, I don't hear nobody, agents, but to the power of the almighty God. I know, Adam, you ain't been screaming and standing because you weak from your honeymoon, but get some strength back and come through here. You asked for, you got it. It is so important and so imperative that we find out whether miracles even still exist. Because some people never believe in the thing that they've never received. But look at somebody prematurely and tell them, I'm proof that there's a miracle. I'm proof that there's miracles. Tell them, you don't know my story, all the things that I've been through. You don't know my pain and what I had to go through to get here. You don't understand my pain. Don't try to figure it out. But my worship. <laughs> my worship is for real. Beginning at verse 10, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath that he is Jesus. How would any church act if Jesus was their guest speaker? These people had an opportunity to hear a perfect God who was a perfect man preach a perfect message on a perfect day and still doubt it. Look at somebody and tell them, how dare they?
And when Jesus' day was there to preach, which was this particular Sabbath, verse 11 said, There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her in the midst of his teaching, he paused the sermon to deal with a situation. That's why I said, if I should dance in the middle of my message, I'm trying to attract a miracle. Some of you dance with music, dance for singing. Then when it's preaching, you go to sleep. Then when the music comes, you get back up. That's fake. That's not real. But when it's real, the word of God saturates your situation. Because a miracle is not sealed without a word from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell him just one word from the Lord. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said to her, woman, here come Bishop Jakes. Thou. Art loose from thine infirmity. Jesus cried out to her, Woman, thou art loose. Back to my voice from thine infirmity. Y'all laughing, but I believe he patented that part, boy. Then he laid hands on her. And how soon, y'all? Oh, I do have to. Immediately. You can get the first part of your miracle before you walk out of this door. Based upon how you receive what God is saying. Y'all don't have to stand. I got enough visitors. I don't need my members today. Immediately she was made straight. And glorified God. Oh, but there were some haters on the premises because verse 14. The rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus healed on the Sabbath and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Let me critique this because I got a lot of bloggers and vloggers who take what I say out of context, but I only pastor one church. I don't say this for you to like it. I say it to grow who I am accountable to. But let me modernize this and say this to ten folk who will jump. And you have to understand it. This verse bothers me because it shows the reason why miracles are not done in church are the rules have changed. So now we got to get a miracle outside of church. Because the Sabbath day is not the right day to be healed. Are you saying I get healed from the world and sick from folk in church? Oh, I didn't get no help in that section. The people who are talking Deacon Mays are not Christians. They are so-called biblicists, which means they protect the written word of God, not New Testament, from the days of Moses. And they believe that God's interpretation of six days man should work, but on the seventh day he rested, is that nothing that is considered work should be done on the Sabbath. Let me finish reading, because I just made it as simple as I can make it. I'll say it like this and somebody texts it to me and I'll see if 30 of you really serious. A church without miracles is a church that won't let God work. Now that's real simple. And in order for God to work, he need lives that need his help. 
Look at your neighbor and tell him, I got a job for God to do. I promise you, I got a job for God to do. How much you got to pay for these miracles, Bishop? You got to pay attention. Some of you be in church after you shout, you're so exhausted, start checking your phone, leaning, taking naps. That's why you leave here the same way you came. The Lord, verse 15, Jesus said unto them, thou hypocrite. Do not each one of you, I'm going to teach this for about a month. Do not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead them away to watering. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham who Satan y'all has bound. Y'all don't want me to preach. Lo! He's been doing this to her for 18 years. Should not she be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Look at your neighbor. See if they right. Tell them you can leave in here loose today. Be loosed. Woman. But I can't say that because I want men to be loose. Children to be loose. Sons and daughters. Marriages. Physical ailments. I need this church loose. Verse 16, ought not this woman be a daughter of Abraham whom Satan have bound low these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, because he read them their rights, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Look at your neighbor and tell them your miracle will shut their mouths. Will you tell them that? Stop defending your miracle with your mouth. Your miracle can talk. I'm going to say it again. When what God has done for you is real, let it speak. Vision speak. Though it tarry, wait for it. It shall speak. And not lie. Now, just to prove my historical content based upon the premise that uh, miracles are part of the workforce. I want to draw your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I only want to uh, bring in and adopt one verse. Well, go to verse 9 and 12, excuse me. Go to verse 9 and 12, put it on the screen, and let me read. Now remember, this sermon is the new one. To another, the Lord gave faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit verse 10 listen to how it's written to another the working of miracles miracles are falling into a work category go back to 9 and lead me to 10 again because I've got some folk on the little red train and I want to help them to another faith which we just preached about oh y'all don't hear me so some of you now have your faith but do you know how to work your miracle I'll be right back with you to another faith I get several texts from around the world but several from this church that say I really enjoyed you today you can't enjoy what you don't even have knowledge of you're supposed to appreciate it. Don't enjoy it. Eat it. To another faith, by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. Not the gift of healing. There are several gifts of healing. Just like it's in the med field, some people specialize in blind eyes opening. 
So if you had cancer and you saw God give a miracle to somebody like Dr. Mixon, why you run into other people for prayer when the cure is in the product, right? Some of you can't get a miracle because you don't want to go to who God tells you to go to. If somebody was in a certain condition that resembles mine and you come out of it, I might hate your guts, but I'm going to tell you, I don't like you, but I need to ask you a question. See, I'm real. You ain't real. And maybe if you help me, we can start talking. But I do want you to know I ain't going to lie. I don't like you. But what God brought you out of is too similar to what I meant. How are you going to get blessed if God puts what you need in who you don't like? That's the mature question. Some of you have been out there looking for a miracle because you didn't like the package the miracle came in. But let me come back. <sighs> Gifts of healing by the same spirit. Verse 10. I'm only bringing this in now till Bible study to another person, the working of miracles. Now, leave that there for about five, ten seconds. Let me say this for two scholars or those who want to be scholarly who will jump up just as an act of faith. He said in nine, he gave faith in ten. And we now see the word miracle. We see the word work. I want to put it together. Faith without works. So if you have faith, where's the miracle? You must stand on your faith until God works out that miracle. Let me talk to Bible. And though it says, having done all to stand. Stand. Look at your neighbor. That's your person you chose to sit next to and tell them stand on it until it happens. And if they ain't talking to you, you shouldn't be marrying them, kissing them, taking them to eat. They talk more at a table and in bed than they talk to you in the presence of God. Talk to me in the presence of who made me. Most folk that don't talk to you are talking about you anyway, but stay with me. To another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Might as well tell you this and see who will scream at me. All the things y'all do the most are at the bottom of the list. That's at the bottom of the list. That's at the bottom of the list. Thus saith the Lord thy God. That's still at the bottom of the list. Speaking in tongues but don't have no product. Quickening and jumping and still can't find a job. Come on, y'all. Evangelists, missionaries, and all these titles and on your third marriage. Help me out with this. God has used you to open blind eyes called the dead back from the grave and you can't believe God for a migraine headache. Help me out with this. I ain't praying for nobody who claim to be anointed. I ain't praying for none of your sick issues if your prayer works for others and can't work on you. A headache? My power is too big for a headache. You got to come to me for something else. Pray for my marriage. You sleep with her. That's your marriage. I got to pray for me. Man, go on with that. See, you don't like it because God don't use you in it. You know how many people are exhausted for helping people that refuse to help themselves? Pimping your prayer life. Pimping your love. Pimping your gift. Do you know how many of us And because you've been used by other people but still let God use you to the place of exhaustion, God said September is your month for a miracle. Now you may not get it sounding like that yet, but we're going to work on you.
So we have Jesus in Luke. I'm almost there, Dr. Mixon. You can have the mic. We have Jesus in Luke chapter 13 being attacked because the miracle that he wrought is on the Sabbath. And those who know the scripture but take it too strict uh, is now trying to make her miracle illegal because of the day in which it was done. Like there are people that if you get blessed with a new car today and some man buys it for you, there are a group of Christian women who will say she had to sleep with him. Why couldn't she just got a miracle and you said she had to because you did. See, the issue is you think there's a group that won't wait. Oh, I can't get no help. The prerequisite for a miracle is long waiting. She waited 18 years. And for those who are waiting as I build this wonderful series, good things come. To those who wait. Wait, I say. And again. I want to speak into the minds and lives and the hearts of those that are tender enough to receive seed. That you're on the last cycle of waiting. Will you tell someone I'm on my last cycle of waiting? Boy, make me preach. John still looked the same. to another the working you got to give your miracle time to work after you pray for one as things get harder it means the miracle is in motion why would things get worse after you get a good announcement it's because the announcement knows that what God spoke is about to come to pass but we need to see whether you have enough resilience to stand on the word of God. Even on the dollar bill, 55, 10, 20, 100, whatever denomination, it tells you don't trust in me. Even the stuff you working hard for say, I'm going to give out on you. It said, you spend me, but you don't pay attention to what I wrote. On the top, it says, in God. Oh, y'all don't hear me. We trust. If you flip it, it's the same. Trust in God. But some of you chasing that money, but a miracle is when money start chasing you. Once you stop chasing what you want, I wish I had a hundred people. It is there is a great possibility that what you were chasing after will chase you. Open your mouth with faith and say, Come get me then. Come get me. this woman who Jesus is brought up on Trump charges for helping I'm almost ready to preach what was I'm about to make preaching a lot more harder for all y'all you're going to need a miracle to preach behind me because if the first me you were scared of you're going to die on this part right here The only way you can preach behind someone that hears from God is you got to hear from the same God. And work it the way he puts it in you. What, what, what was wrong with her, Curry? What was wrong with her? And I feel like preaching was, she was a member of a synagogue. I'm going to make it a modern day church for at least 18 years that didn't have enough power 
to get her out of her pickle. Her situation is described as bent over. And could in no wise get up straight. So the series is about a miracle, but the topic for 10 young folk who would jump is straighten out my life. Will you tell the Lord, straighten out my life. First series of the sermon, straighten out my life. Don't straighten out my money yet. Don't straighten out my marriage. Don't straighten out nothing. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Y'all not talking, but there are folk in here who's been out of shape that's helping other folk get straight and you still bent over. You helping other folk pay their rent and your house in foreclosure. This is, this is, this is not fair. Somebody look up to God and act like you ain't perpetrating. Tell them, straighten me out first, Lord. I thought a miracle was something done after something else has been considered dead or can no longer be helped. But when I looked the word up in the Greek, it's, well, there's several meanings, but everywhere you see miracle is not the same definition. But in this particular pericope passage of scripture, which is pregnant with the possibilities of preaching, the word miracle in this particular passage is say me on. Say me on. The root word in that text is the, I mean, in that Greek word is spelled say. All right, y'all don't have to get it. You don't have to get it. Some of you can't get it till you say it. And the reason why you don't get it is because of what you say. Well, I believe I'm about to lose this job. Now you lost it. I sure hope this relationship works. Now it don't work because you're still hoping with a negative outlook. So you need God to work on you. Come on, I would just say it with belief. And then give time its rights. I hear somebody in the back who didn't read the Bible. They're still not talking. I tried to teach y'all how to get it, but you won't follow simple instructions, which is just to respond on things that are correct for your life. But, but catch this, because I heard you. Why do we have to wait long when we just read it said immediately? For you that don't go to church, stop questioning the sermon. For you that don't even own the Bible or download one on your app, don't question the sermon. Because let me help five of you who will jump for me. It does say she received it immediately. It, well, it says she received it immediately, but that was after 18 years. So that word immediately does not mean right after. It means your situation is waiting on the right word. So you've been taking your issue to folk with issues and it makes you wait, 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 wait. But once, when you, but once you get in the presence of a person that can tell you what it really means and you grasp it, things turn around quickly. Some of you are allergic to the truth, but be seated. Say me on. Say me on in this particular scripture means this. And then I do want for you to jump. Then those who jump after, it's because you're becoming very uh, attractive. Say me on does not actually mean the working of a miracle. It actually does not mean uh, something that happens after you should have died. In other instances in the Bible, it means that. But in this particular passage, what it means is, and I hope somebody catch it, that when God gives you a miracle, he gives it to you to make you stand out amongst other people. That's God's way of saying, I want to do for you what I don't want to do for anybody else. And when I do it, don't say nothing. It'll speak for itself. And you'll know it's a miracle when they start hating on what I did.
It's a miracle when your own family start hating on what God did. Did you get your car yet? I heard you was running around that loud church and he said you was going to get something. Did you get it yet? Then about time you get it, that was just coincidence. Hold on now. Before it was coincidence, you were judging my worship. Now that it came to pass, you want to judge the miracle too? That simply means whoever hates you never wanted you to get it. Look at someone and tell them you're going to get it despite them, despite all of them. I didn't say to spite them, I said despite. Say me on simply means God wants to do something remarkable to you, for you, that will make you stand out. That's all it means. Some of you don't even know that you qualify for one, but let me give this and I'm going to move on because y'all not ready for this. You don't even know you're getting a miracle, but the way folk treat you should let you know you're in line. Because God will show your enemy your finished product before he ever show you. So you show up minding your business. You confused. I don't know why they don't like me. What have I done to them? You survive. You look better than them in your worst season. What are you going to look like in your best? I told y'all a week or two ago, some of y'all going to get broke trying to be somebody else. Let me go to my paragraphs. I was going to give you some more studying. Look at all these visitors helping me. Tell me what city y'all from so I can open up a church in your city. See, they ready for me to leave. Yes, sir, Bishop. Listen. Oh, no, I never told y'all I would stay here. Y'all understand that, don't you? I'm not kidding. All right. I find it very important today that we begin this particular series with answering a question I'm about to preach. What is a miracle according to biblical standards? Not according to the Webster Merriam Dictionary or the American Collegiate. What is the real definition of a miracle according to biblical standards? One of the prerequisites for a miracle is the person or persons must be in a situation or circumstance that they need help to get out of. If you're one of those people, be very transparent this morning and say, I'm one of those. See, because miracles don't start just because God wants to work it. He needs somebody honest enough to say, I need it. always want you to look better than the mess you're in but you can still admit you in a mess while you dress better I can't get help feel help I need thee oh I need thee I'm gonna get my miracle before I leave here every hour I need thee oh bless me now my savior I come to thee so if I'm going to him he's the magnet I'm the product. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is. And what is he? He's a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently do what? That's the same term for being drawn. I'm attracted to Jesus. Will you tell two and three people that and mean it? Don't say God. Don't say Lord. Call him by his name. Yes, 
Number two, the second qualification is normally there's a need of faith to ignite this miracle. But there are rare instances like two or three today where your faith won't matter. He's doing it because he can. I'm too drained, Lord. I ain't even got enough faith to say thank you no more. But will you still use me as proof? That you're a miracle working God. Some of your cases are not because of sin. It's that the works of God may be made manifest. Who did sin that this man was born blind? Him or his parents? He's, Jesus said nobody. I just need a few candidates that will let me put them in situations. So that my glory can be revealed. Y'all are boring me today. Maybe if some of y'all sit further back, it'll get better up here. The engaging of faith is visible when the recipient is taking steps towards the miracle. The only faith I have, Lord, is I'm here. I want to talk to all 200 of you. If you made it this morning, you qualify. Because for some of us, it wasn't easy getting up to go because pressure, unresolved issues, a text at the last minute, an argument that makes no sense. It just drained my senses. Seventeen minutes, I fly my kite. Sometimes Christ, I choose to call him Christ, will come to where you are because your life is too out of shape to get to him. As Izzy said, for those who will talk to me, the Lord will meet you where you are. Lord, those that are clapping, sick them, Holy Ghost. Sick them, Holy Ghost. That's how my great-grandmother used to pray. Sick them, Holy Ghost. In this first text of our series and the first topic of the series that I chose to preach, God told me to call this subject, this topic, straighten out my life. The first proof is that you're getting a miracle is not how rich you are. It's how straight you are. Because there are folk with money that ain't happy. There are folk married that still need a relationship. Oh, y'all quiet. But when what you do has a certain shape. And it is operating within the mold that God created it to operate. That means you're a miracle. When you can do things that most people will not do, your life is miraculous. When you can walk away from things that people can't walk away from. I ain't talking to y'all because I know y'all creeping and sneaking. Your wife, your life is miraculous. I don't preach to y'all to get on your nerve, but I know everything that each one of you are doing behind the scene. Every one of you. From one dating an older man who pays you and you won't tell your mama to the other that likes another girl, you won't tell nobody. I know what all y'all doing. Ain't no hikabashia now. Ain't no preach, bishop. With all the shouting and praise dancing and singing and crying, you can't break free from that situation. Your life ain't straight. So you cover an out of shape life with your singing. Dancing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm back. It 
In this first text, we attack one area, and that is, Lord, without telling people how my life got bent out of shape, can you straighten it out? Hold on. I need real screamers on this. The miracle is not that he straightened it out. The miracle is he didn't tell how he got bent out of shape. Most people take what they know negative about you to use it against you when your life starts getting better. Maybe the old mothers can help me on this. Some of the senior fathers, you that are over 50 and 60 now are now fathers early. Some of you are 40s and your grandparents. So that means you're forced to be mature early. Capture this and scream. We need people back in the church that say you better straighten up. But whoever tells us better be straight. Y'all ain't talking. Don't tell me to be something that you're not. And don't be it 30 days, be it for 30 years. Y'all standing up. That means I must be preaching, but I'm, I'm, I'm out of here in a minute. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Qualifications for a particular miracle. The qualification for upgraded worshipers is your life must be contorted, entangled. Your posture has to be where you can barely hold your head up. It takes energy to just look up. You can do it for a Sunday morning, but after that, your head. All right, okay, okay. Look at some of the grown-ups. He need to help them kids. We need to help you grown-ups too. The fruit don't fall. Qualifications of this particular miracle in this particular text is that her life had to be contorted, entangled. Her posture had to be in a place where she could barely hold her head up in that season. Holding your head up takes too much effort and drains your strength. And that is God will put you around people who normally get on your nerve and drain you and tell you, hold your head up. Yes. Smile. When they ask you, is it well? Tell them it's well. Yes. Ain't nothing well, but by faith. Yes. All right. Okay. It is well. Never agree with your adversary on what they say. I want you to be friends with that neighbor. High five somebody and tell them you getting straightened out right now. Tell them I see a change in you immediately. Once the change occurs in you, the situation will change to fit the new you that you become. All right, I need to preach this. I'm almost there. Once you change, the situation will change to become what it is for the new you. You want God to fix something that won't even be drawn to you because you and it are the same. And the same don't attract. They push away. They refuse. God can't give a million to a crackhead. he would be funding your addiction. Oh, y'all cry. He's looking for somebody that got delivered from that situation. Then he brings money so that you can become who you actually need to be. I think only my right ear can hear, but, but it's okay. Now, after this, I'm almost at the hoop because I don't have no more notes because this is a new sermon. But the last qualification in the text for my one member who's been enjoying this is she's contorted. She's entangled. She's out of shape. She's bent over. She can barely get up. Can't hold her head up. Takes too much effort. But what gets her the miracle, which is why some of you today, I promise in Jesus' name, will have it before you get home, is that with the shape she was in, she made it to the synagogue. 
I'm almost there. She got to church. She got to church. She didn't care what she looked like or what she felt like. She took her and it. The devil bound her and she told the devil, we're going to church this morning, but only one of us coming back. Oh, I want to preach. The devil said to her, you've been going to church 18 years and I still got you. She said, not today. Jesus is the speaker. When he heard that name, Jesus, he made her feel worse. Worse agonizing pain rheumatoid arthritis everything hitting her like a ton of bricks everything just not to get to church today because the speaker is Jesus <laughs> I can leave y'all right now I don't even care about you no more Crippling arthritis. The things that some of us have with age that tell us stay home today and watch virtually. But if she'd have watched virtually, she wouldn't been touched. And most of the services some of you miss, you miss your miracle because the miracle is not viewing. It's being touched. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. We used to get more miracles years ago simply because of a phrase and a few other things. But let me give you the phrase. Then give me five minutes. 30 of you scream loud on this phrase. They said, I can't wait to get to church to hear what the Lord has to say. Now the Lord can't say it without a preacher, but they were saying, is I'm hoping what comes out of the man or woman of God's mouth qualifies me for a miracle. Oh, I meant what I said. I need to attract it. And God inhabits. You have to be attractive. You got to praise him in pain. That knee hurt. Dance on it anyhow. Hold on to somebody's shoulder, use them as a crutch. And about time you do that, that knee might snap in place. And you walk out of here looking for something that's been expelled from your body. How come we look for the problem more than the, more than the solution? We tell you, you heal, you wake up looking for it. Like you want it back. Why you don't look for the healing like that every day? Y'all nurse problems because that's the only way you get attention. She comes to church that night or that Sabbath day. And she is, the Bible says, bent out of shape. It also says for talkers and in no wise. 
which means she tried to get up straight that day. She had to get dressed in an unusual posture. She didn't care. I'm going. If my mother don't go, I want to preach. If my father don't, if my sister don't go, I ain't got no ride. You got everywhere else this week. I ain't got no gas, Bishop, because you went everywhere you shouldn't to get where you should. Ain't getting no money from me, but let me go back. She tried. It hurt her arm. She had to tell her daughter, raise my arm slow. Mom, you just ought to get back in bed. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Put my arm in. What was whoever was helping her doing for those who will scream for 30 seconds or less, real less, dressing her for a miracle? She said, girl, put my foot in my shoe. Mom, it must be a special speaker for you to be going to church in all this pain. Mama probably told the daughter, I ain't never heard of the man. All I know is the flyers say he married boy. Oh, I know the, the, uh, the bulletin say, put, baby, put my foot in my shoe. The bulletin say he was born in a manger. baby let me breathe for a little while and then we'll start dressing again but they told me they told me that Isaiah spoke of him and said and unto us a son is born I gotta preach and unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be, baby, straighten my hair out. Put that little iron comb on the old stove and heat it up and get me some Crisco lard and put it in my hair and use that straightening comb and get these kinks out because I want to dress like I'm getting something when I get there. I got to look like it before I receive it. I'm not going to go there and wait to get it. I'm going to go there dressed to receive it. And baby, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, I'm preaching on who was with you in your surgery, everlasting Father, who made the doctor find it before it finished you, Prince of Peace, Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load carrier. I know y'all tired. Who is it? If you don't know by now, shame on you. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Brad, when I'm hungry. Water, when I'm thirsty. He is Alpha. And Omega. The beginning. And the ending. The first. And the last. That which was. Is. And is to come. He is my battle axe. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's Ezekiel's ladder. He's Moses' rock of ages. He's water in a dry place. Whatever you need. Whatever you need, that's who he is. But I got to add one more thing, then read one more sentence and I'm done. 
But to the hundreds and thousands of you watching, those who will scream, he's a miracle worker. Uh, he's a miracle worker. When life's troubles come our way, we must hold our heads up high and say, hallelujah, anyhow. Y'all better find somebody and talk to them, tell them hallelujah, anyhow. Never let life's troubles get you down. When life's troubles come your way, hold your head up high and say hallelujah. Anyhow, now you that are quiet, you already disqualified. But you that understand that between now and the next 60 minutes, You'll have a testimony to tell somebody, look where the Lord has brought us from. Testify to your neighbor till they get happy. Give me some more gains out there and say, look where the Lord has brought us from. Finish testifying. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light and I get joy I get joy I get joy when I think about uh, what the Lord has done for me you tag somebody on the shoulder and say oh neighbor I know it took effort to raise your head up this week to put on your clothes and go to a draining job to put on your clothes and treat folk right that treat you wrong but tell them this morning when I rose I didn't have no doubt I knew the Lord would take care of me I knew the Lord will provide for me I knew the Lord would lead me on the way tag somebody else and say neighbor between now and 24 hours God's gonna straighten me out and I'm telling the Lord if nobody wants to be straight now here I am show everybody that I'm a living miracle. I want to tell everybody, God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I, 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 I feel him. I said, I feel the Lord. I feel him all over me. If you're talking to somebody that looks dead, leave them alone till next Sunday. But find somebody that agrees with you and say, oh, 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 neighbor. Did not I tell you that within 24 hours, every part of your life that was contorted, distorted, out of shape, entangled, and out of order. Tell them, I know that all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But the God I serve, I don't care how many broken pieces your life is in right now he's about to pick up every piece i wish i had a sanctified church because the potter wants to put you back 
together again. Shake somebody that looks like they're happy for you and tell them all I want you to know is after this word today that I believe that God's about to do it again. What is he about to do? He's about to pick me up. Turn me around. Plant my feet upon a solid foundation. You order, you order, you order, you order. Shake somebody's hand and repeat after your pastor and say, neighbor, neighbor, congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Tell them first thing, neighbor, let me commend you for not looking like the mess that I know your life has been in. Thank you for dressing for a miracle. Thank you for clapping like a miracle. Thank you for talking like a miracle. But in 24 hours, late, late in the midnight hour, God gonna turn it around it's gonna work it's gonna work in your favor why don't y'all tell five or six people today everything that didn't work is about to work because tell them I know that it's the Sabbath I know that God told us don't work so keep the Sabbath holy but tell them one thing you miss. I'm not in church this morning to work. But God never told himself not to work on the Sabbath. He told us don't work on the Sabbath. What do we do when we don't have to work? We go to church and we worship. Why we worship? God goes to work. Every time. I turn around The Lord Keeps on blessing me Why don't y'all preach now And look up to God And say Lord Let the Lord Let the Lord Any way you bless me
you only need a miracle. But I need God to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that I could ask or think. Look at somebody, tell them you need a blessing, but I need a miracle. So excuse my behavior. I got to get out of this pretzel. I got to get out of this pickle. I've got to straighten myself up. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Grab a different person and say, neighbor, I've always had the testimony that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost feet, fire baptized, but I got to change my testimony and add one more line. Say, neighbor, introducing my new self, still saved, still sanctified. Still Holy Ghost feel, but I'm in shape now. Did you catch me? I wasn't in shape last year. I was saved. I wasn't happy last year. I was sanctified. I was broke, but I still had the Holy Ghost. But the new me. You that know you about to have the best life, I know you don't believe in screaming, but just shock yourself and your neighbor and say, oh!
his hand. I want to close. Straighten us out, Lord. Hold the music. Straighten us out. Straighten us out. The Holy Ghost is here. To help us be restored. Renewed, refreshed, revived, recompensated. I have a machanda, Lord. I feel Jesus. They say folk don't have church like this no more. Maybe they don't. But we will. Y'all try to be calm on God while you dying. Go ahead and be sweet and charismatic. Your swag is for women. It ain't for God. But when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say I've been blessed. That's my testimony. Three things. Look at me and hear me clearly. Lonnie, it's good to see you. One thing is, they use the scripture of not working on the Sabbath on who's the author of the scripture that they use. You can use the same speed and law on the cop. You did 60, he drove 80 to catch you. He's not speeding. He's catching up with you to stop you from illegally driving. And the Lord said, tell them they owe me praise for how fast I had to catch up with them. Because they were so far gone. That I had to do what I've never done before for a generation I never had to do it for. Look at me. She only needs one person at a time. The rest of you need what's going on right up here. And listen to me and look at me. Jesus showed up. Look at me. He showed up that day as a Jew. It was his turn to read. Started reading a scripture that he couldn't finish. Because what is scripture without proof? Oh, y'all lost that all this preaching we've been getting all of the prophecy we've been getting prayer where's the evidence there needs to be a pause in scripture just for a miracle to occur two the bible said she had what is called a pneuma astenia look at me that words those words mean spirit of infirmity which means for two screamers that caught the sermon, she was experiencing an illness that she did not have. I'm going to say it one more time. For all y'all that say you doctor this and lying, you need to hear something. She didn't have an illness. She had a spirit of. Which meant Satan made her believe that what she had was real because of what she felt. Some of you bring your feelings too much. 
to where it's exhausting your faith and, disqui and disqualifying you for a miracle. You're babysitting your feelings. Look at me, I'm closing. She had a pneuma astenea. Then Jesus said, we're going to close. I said two more things and listen. Jesus said to her, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Then he tells her, let me touch you. And in areas that she could not comfortably stand up. She knew it was gone when she could change her posture. All right, everybody's fine. When you change, so does your posture. Not just your posture, your company. Maybe even your address. I see help right there. This is my last thing that I'm going to leave you with. Then on Wednesday, we'll have Bible study in Jacksonville. And I'll talk about the first miracle he did in Cana of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And I'll preach the sermon, this is what I have a taste for. We're going to have a good little time. Oh, we're going to have a good little time. Look at me as you're uh, 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 in covenant with who's next to you. Look at me, both of you. Jesus set the lady free. She got up straight. You would think that church would have been happy for her. Here is where I close. When he said to her, woman, thou art loose my voice from thine infirmity when he said that he said it in the Greek what it reads in the Greek is apoluo apogeos from thy astenea that's what it says it's okay if you're lost but stay here apoluo apogeos s thy astenea he no longer said she had a spirit of, he now addresses the spirit, not what is of. Stop. Which means I don't care how you got broke, you ain't broke no more. You know, he no longer addresses the attachment to the issue. Oh. He goes straight to the issue. In my clothes, this is how it reads. And I'm going to see if 50 people catch it and get extremely excited. She says this. He said, Apoluo Apajus, Jos. That word Apoluo Apajos for my members and for the visitors who will. I'll scream my members says, Jesus told her in our English. Look it up. I told you, Apoluo Apajos. Dr. Tracy normally looks everything up. He tells this woman, you need to, after now that you are straight, divorce this ministry. Uh -huh. Look up, Apoluo. See, some of you trying to go back where you were from, trying to rekindle what was already dead, but... He's... Uh-oh, it just got quiet, huh? He said to her, Apoluo Apajos. There's a woman in here that I could say that word to who would probably run if she felt like it because it would confirm what God sent her here for, right? I would say Apoluo Apajos to the woman in the white, right? With the gray hair. After 2025, they won't be able to touch you. They won't be able to understand you. And somebody ought to shout yes. Now listen, come back here. He said to her, Apoluo Apogeos e astenea. The word you get, pneuma, spirit, is the same word for breath, pneuma, spirit, breathing. If something's wrong or infected your breath, it's pneumonia. All right, y'all catch it. Something is wrong with your breathing. You that can't praise, you got pneumonia. You that can't scream thank you, but you're in a pickle, you got pneumonia. Men, I'm a man, I don't scream. We scream at games and fights. Why we scream for the brutal sports? 
but can, but, but can scream for the one who died for you on the cross. You're insulting. You have a pneuma astenea. He said to her, I believe I would just Dr. Mix and I close. And what happens is she gets up straight. They then attack Jesus by saying the Sabbath day is a day where you cannot work, which means miracles are in the category of work. Jesus did not change his scripture for anybody, not even himself. He was so smooth. This is what he did. And this is where women would jump because the men are not with me. They're still mad. But this is where Jesus and women all get excited. He said to them who questioned him, this morning when you woke up, you freed your ox and your asses. You loosed them so they could drink. But this daughter of Abraham, you want her to stay back. Now, I'll see the men didn't move. The reason why they loose their axe and ox to drink is that was their vehicles to make money. So as long as she bound, she can't run a business right. As long as she's bound, she can't get married right. Certain people just in your life to keep you from getting what God has for your life. And you have to make up in your mind. I'm going to straighten up. You don't need God to get them out of your face. You need to be blessed till they get out of yours. You can't chase me from my church. You're going to leave first. Because this is the place where I hear Jesus. And this is the place where Jesus gets me. Straight. Don't get mad at me. I'm a, I'm a Bible preacher. You that don't have a church and a pastor, you ain't straight. At all. I don't care what you feel. Get a scripture. We are straightened out by Bible. You got to stay whether they like you or not. I don't care if it's 18 years. They don't know God loves you till they're there when you get straight. Look at somebody, mean it by faith and mean it by fact and tell them by tomorrow, I'm going to be straight. You hear me? One of our members, hold hands, look at me. One of our members and his name is Kelvin. Uh-oh, I like that he dancing for his. One of our members and his name is Kelvin. He's related to the Jenkins I asked his uncle whether he knew where his nephew was. Yes, sir. Yeah. And Jenkins told me no. He said, I don't know where he is. I said, he been in jail. Yeah. He said, what? You know how Jenkins is. Really? Well, if you don't care, I don't care. But he was in jail. In Virginia, the Commonwealth. <laughs> See, those who travel know. They picked him up and his family and accused him of something drastic. Locked him up immediately with only one call. They told his family, you might as well go back to Tampa because he ain't getting out till five to 12 years. He said, Bishop, I was watching you while I was away, was too embarrassed to tell anybody. He said, but it wasn't me. He said, but I hung on to your faith preaching and you said, by August the last day, God will work a miracle. On August the 30th, he said, he heard me say, some of y'all's miracle is in, in your email box. Said he opened up the email. The lawyer wrote the letter saying, I'll be there to get you. All charges have been dropped. You're going home. He texted you on Messenger two days ago and told you? Oh, oh, you spoke to him. Who else spoke to him? 
And what did he tell you? He didn't say nothing to you? Nor nothing to Javon. And y'all spoke to him. Kelvin Desar, come here. I don't care about yours. August 30th? Yes, sir. Read. Because yours ain't got no power. Good morning, Bishop. Good morning, Bishop. In caps, you told us by the end of August, I was falsely accused of a major crime in Virginia that carries five to ten years in state prison if convicted when I was on vacation. Stop, because y'all thought I was lying. I spent time in jail, was denied bond while on vacation in Virginia. They have no evidence and basically pro profiled me. My family had to leave me in Virginia, go back home to continue life without me because of work, school, and etc. I rarely check my phone emails because my work emails are draining. But God forced me to check it this morning. All charges are dropped. The move of God is going through virtually. How don't you believe God? One of the kickers is he didn't have a paid for attorney. But what is humongous for a screamer is no one knew when he went in and didn't know nothing till he got out. About time your enemies find out what was wrong, it'll be right. Y'all ain't talking. All I want God to do is straighten us. Let people find out what they want to know after. But don't you get back into that pretzel. You're holding the hand of a miracle. Don't touch me and not believe for me. Because I'm serious about mine. See, I don't play. People know they can't just touch me, lay hands on me, grab my hand. Everybody knows that. Because I take this serious. You ain't just going to walk up here and the Lord told me to lay hands on you. He did not tell you that. But if anybody's going to hold your hand, find out whether they believe for you or not. Because where there's two or three touching and agreeing, the Lord said, I can get involved. There am I in the midst. God won't get involved until somebody gets concerned and you need to understand that. That word breath, Posh, that word breath, prophetess, you that hold true weight in the kingdom. That word breath, pneuma, I told you, root word for pneumonia when it's wrong. It says, whatever had the woman bent out of shape was not an illness because he didn't say be healed. It was a person breathing down her neck. Sometimes your greatest disease is your company. And if they don't believe for you, they are a dis-ease or a disease. One of my members called me. Somebody called her on anonymous call, cussed out. She's a thug. She wanted to go get the person. I said, you will be giving away all of your strength to this idiot hiding behind a block number. The problem is not them, it's you. You still pay attention to what's worthless. And that translates to how you view yourself.
If somebody says something about me that's worth saying and I love them, I will approach them. If a hater says it, I'll just keep on trucking. Oh, I'm human. I'll feel it, but I won't entertain it. Keep on trucking, baby. You're holding the hand of a person who needs to believe that you know that 24 hours something drastic and beautiful. Something that's special. It's going to happen because you and that person are attracting miracles. And I expect a miracle, Waldron, every day. I expect God to make a way out of no way. Now, people think I'm two and three different people, but if you sit with me in any given situation, I'm always, some kind of way, putting God in my conversations. He's my base. It's by him that I live, move, have my very existence. And my testimony is the same as my great-grandparents, and he walks with me. Come on, is that your testimony? Claim it. And he talks with me. And he tells me on the regular, you're mine. And I get joy when I think about it. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. If you're holding that person's hand, don't take from them, give to them. Use your faith for their situation and let someone else use theirs for yours. I had no faith for myself back in the day when Dr. Mixon had stage four cancer. I was drained Elder White, of every bit of faith I had, asking God to keep her alive. He asked me nicely, do you want to take a place? And I said nicely, no. See how y'all too deep for me. I said, can we discuss something else? He said, yeah, but I love your honesty. He said, if you want to see her healed, this is the deal, and y'all ain't going to believe it. I'm going to preach it, and I'll give it to you in our next meeting. He said, you come off the road and pastor, and I'll let her live. No, no, that was as hard as taking her place. Because I felt pastoring this particular area of ministry would be another form of a casket. But when I look at this ministry and see the growth, this is a miracle. Not only did she receive one, but this alone. Miracles exist when someone makes a sacrifice. I never saw it like this. And God said, you ain't seen the half. But God's about to give our church and those watching multiple miracles. He's about to give us things that will pass our understanding. You can be in the church and not be in the ministry. So some of you ain't getting it because your heart's not here, only your person. But today, the message from God to us is, be thou loosed. From what? Whatever's giving you a bad vibe. Whatever's messing with your breathing. Whatever's causing you to become decongested and contaminated. Be loose from it. The membership of that church called the synagogue, the Bible said, after Jesus rebuked them, 
everybody else said they glorified God because they were tired of being enslaved by pitiful preaching. They were glad Jesus came and preached a sermon like that and was used like that and then defended what he did to where the others said, we glorify God, which meant she wasn't the only one out of shape. She was the only one chosen for the sermon. Some of you are going through what others are going through, but you ain't going through it bad enough to be a character. When you're a character, you make bad look good. You encourage folk while you discourage. God is looking for an example. You can't keep vanishing when things get hard. That's when you pull up. And show people we straight. Last thing. The Lord has given me this. This had nothing to do with me. The Lord said only tell three of your people and those who will volunteer this. He said anyone in here that's been treated wrong. But you were the one who went back and apologized and said we good. God said I'm about to show you how good I am to you. Because at that time you was being used as an example. Of what God did for a lot of people. And you didn't move till they understood it. Are we good? Are we clear? Want to go eat? You confused the hater. That's my second job after I preach. Is to confuse my enemies. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Nobody told me the road would be easy. But I don't believe. He's brought us this far. Just to leave us. Play in the F sharp. Yeah, that piano. Lord, I feel good. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. I really love you. That's for who you are. Just for who you are in all of your glory my heart my heart sings holy 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 you are everything I need you to be you are everything I need you to you are the great I am. You are the great I am. I am. All right, you should know it, everybody. Lord, I love you. You better tell him. Yes, I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I can just for who you are in all of your glory. My heart, my heart, holy, holy, you are. Heads bowed and eyes closed.
You are the great. You are the great. Testify till he gets drawn to you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Today, out of the 200 or so people that we have in our sanctuary, I don't do camera tricks. I don't make people think church packing it ain't, but it is. 